What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Burndown. It's Wednesday, Friday. It's Stash Friday. And today we have a special guest for an interview. So uh, he's actually joining right now. So let's cut this intro pretty short. Justin, tell him what else. B-O-T-L. KWT, you guys know if you're interested in seeing it, stay tuned. It's the burn down. It's the burn down, baby. Justin, we got Eric up there, and we have a very special guest, a good friend of ours from the gram. You guys know him as BOTL.KWT. Saad, welcome to the burnout, brother. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Welcome, 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 my friend. It's been a long time. Uh huh. This is so for the coronavirus. We had this. What are you doing during uh, during social distancing? Like, what's going mm-hmm. on? <laughs> Well, uh, nothing. Uh, just eating, smoking, drinking, sleeping, and repeat. That's all. <laughs> nothing special. <laughs> Not bad. Nothing special. Uh, exactly really. Where, where, uh, where are you? Like, are you like in the dungeon in the man cave or something like that? It looks like you're. Uh, uh, I'm in the backyard. Unfortunately, we we don't have a lot of flights, so I'm using my iPhone Flash. <laughs> so, uh huh. Making do, man. It looks good. Gotta make do. Gotta make do. Uh It works. We can see you. I'm sure everybody else at home is watching. We can see you. I see you. I see you. I said, well, I I know when we first asked Saad, he said, can we smoke Fuente? Because you guys released on Friday and, you know, you never smoked a Fuente before. So Never. But due to your request, we're all got them right now. So I got the uh, Opus X Churchill. That's nice. I I have the shark. I got another Opus X as well. So Saad's got the eye of the shark, and then Bran, uh, Sean's got a – oh, my God, Brandon, Sean. Justin. Got... <laughs> Man, quarantine's been hitting you hard. <laughs> I talk – those are the two guys I work with every day, all day, so I'm just so used to saying Brandon and Sean. <laughs> uh, but uh, Justin's over there got another Opus X. I don't know if you're – I don't know if you're drinking anything, but this is uh, some Sagamore Spirit straight whiskey. I don't know if you guys are drinking, but that's what I got. I am drinking Grand Marnier. Nice. I'm going with the Japanese whiskey. Uh, it's called oh. the Akashi. Oh, wow. Uh, so we all something. Yeah, but unfortunately, the bottle's up upstairs, but I put already in my flask, so it's kind of it. That works. That works. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. And because I'm out of gas, I see the pond gases. I'm using with matches today. Same here, brother. I, got, I, got I, can, do, I can do it any way you want. I can go torch. I even can go cedar sleeves. I mean, you know what? This is a special day. Why don't we go cedar sleeves? Oh, yeah. Why not? So this is the part of the segment where we just straight up light it up, baby. Let's do it. So let me I mean, like this. Set up. Sad. I mean, I know you're always uh-huh. trying to grow my beard, but I uh, pulled the trigger and just went with the stash. What do you think of the, the stash? I'm actually, I. <laughs> it's nice, actually. You look like uh, you look like I can't remember what's his name, but there's an actor. I, um, you watch Friends, right? Yeah, I know all the characters. Yes. Uh, okay, great. Do you know Monica's uh, boyfriend, the old guy? I, uh, Richard, uh, not Richard. Yeah, Richard. Yes, Richard. Uh huh. So yeah, you look like him, man. <laughs> I've been well, getting uh, I've been getting Freddie Mercury a lot. The guy from the lead singer from Queen. <laughs> that's that's what I'm going with. The matches aren't working for me out here because it's a little windy warm. So I'm just gonna torch it up. Oh yeah, I'm here. Just torch it up, baby. All right. Oh, did it go out on me? No. Come on, give me some. Oh, I was trying to light another another uh, cedar sleeve with the existing 
embers of the other one, but it didn't really light too well. So. Oh. All right. Well, hey, Eric, be careful. <laughs> be careful with their names, huh? Don't ruin the surprise. No, nah, we won't do it. We won't do it. <laughs> about tomorrow. No, not, uh, the next Friday. Sorry. About uh, Cigar Busman? We got him coming on too, but uh, <laughs> but the yeah. the main character is you right now. So cheers to Fuente Friday for you to for uh, for getting us cheers, to do man. this. Fuente Friday. Now I gotta pour up. Now I gotta pour myself a drink. What's the time right now in New York? For us, it's about four o'clock. Yeah. Oh. So what okay. is it? Nine o'clock. Well, nine o'clock by you. Uh. Yep. Nine o'clock. Where's that in the uh, the UK, right? Uh huh. Uh, in Cardiff, it's in Wales. Uh, it's a Welsh. But yeah, uh, the the weather is crazy. Yesterday, thank God today is uh, much better. I was so afraid that today is gonna get rainy or windy, but it's a little bit wind, not that serious. Is it warm out? Is it warm out by you? Mm, a little bit. A little bit. Fifty degrees, sixty. Uh. Where? Uh, 50 degrees, you mean here in the UK? Yeah, where you are. What is it, what is it Celsius? Oh, Celsius, it's like right. Celsius. nine, yeah, nine, 10. Okay, that's about, like yeah, that. about 50, something like that, right? Yeah. And zero Kuwait is 50. Zero degrees is 32, so what is it? Philly really oh, American, what am I thinking? Or something, I don't know. But anyway, but, who's, but, got yeah. who's got one? We got a oh, cheers. I didn't, I, I didn't pour. Uh-oh. Sure. Where'd you put it? <laughs> shit, 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 shit. Shit. My, my dad. Not, we gotta, we gotta let you know. You are the first burn down guest to have on here since you know. That's just oh, yeah, you know, a really cigar happy. smoker in the community. You don't own a business. You don't own a cigar company. You're just a guy who likes cigars. So cheers. He's to you. the first Insta first influencer, first just Instagram influencer we've had. That's right, man. Cheers to that. Cheers. Alu. All right, so. So, everybody knows you as B-O-T-L.K-W-T. Yes, sir. Now, we are assuming the K-W-T means Kuwait? Kuwait, yep. So, is that where you were, were born and raised? Yep. Uh, born and raised, but uh, I born here in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the UK. Uh, for reason, my mother, she's in English. She's not Kuwaiti. So, I mix between Kuwaiti and English. Wow. So yeah, I born in here in the UK, but raised, of course, in Kuwait. That's why your English okay. is so good. I've learned. To Thank come. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, but, I joined one of Saad's uh, Instagram lives once, and I was like, "How does your English so good?" And he just started laughing. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and you know what, good, bro? And you know what? Uh, you know, she got chest fire for sure, Anna. Yeah. yeah. I keep teaching her like how to how to say some words in the English accent. She just keeps saying like, "Shut up, shut up." <laughs> American accent, just saying like, "Shut up." It's like, for example, a water. Uh, how do you say water in uh, in American? Water. 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 But in English, it's water. 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 Something like that. Water. water. Yeah. So every time when I I keep messing with her, like, "Hey, it's not water. It's not water." It's water. She was like, water. shut up. <laughs> okay. it's, I, 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 I come to realize that the English uh, accent, they pronunciate every letter. Yeah. Every, so yeah. where we like water, we, yeah, we get rid of the T, but it's water. You pronunciate every single letter. Uh huh. Yes. It's sounding like a lot like Peaky Blinders. I don't know if you guys ever watched that show, but it's based in, uh, it's based in where is it? Uh, Liverpool? Liverpool, England. So I mean, uh, right? No, I don't Liverpool. think it's Liverpool. I'm not sure, but uh, no, uh, Birmingham, Birmingham, Birmingham. That's where it is, Birmingham. Yeah. So the English yep. accents are flying across. Justin, uh -huh. you need to get. Justin's never seen that show. I keep trying to tell him to get into it. It's like right up his alley. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, I mean, it's, but it's a perfect uh, time. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when it comes down to. Uh, watching TV and there's you and your significant other. If you, were, you can either be uh, right or happy, you know? <laughs> so I kind of just let her pick him. <laughs> and I'm happy man at the end, so. It's funny they say that, guys. Yesterday, my girlfriend was talking to uh, her sister and she was just saying how I'm a 
TV, like a TV chief. She's like, whatever's on, Eric, we're watching what Eric's watching, Netflix. I'm like, you kidding me? You got me watching all the dumb reality girly shows that, like, that you make me watch. Like, what do you want me to do? Sometimes if I have the, the right, I'm just going to take the remote and put on Netflix and put on some cool shark show or some kind of nature thing. About, oh, man. Oh. Anyway. Uh, you know what? It's, it's almost a year for the Burn Down podcast, right? Yeah. Almost. I months. never, yeah, I never seen you guys retro hell. Never. Never seen us what? Retro hell. Oh, retro hell. Yeah. Let the man do it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Can, did, do it. did you do it, Eric, or no? Do retro hell or no? There you go. Not as good as Justin. Let me try it again. Yeah, I'd say, um, yeah, it's not something... A little windy. You really uh, yeah, it's not something getting good. I can do. Yeah, we we've done it, but it's not something I do on a whenever yeah. I'm smoking. It just it actually is pretty. You know, when people would say retro hell, I'm like, all right, it's just smoke through your nose. But actually doing it just then and there, You're I tasting more. You're I taste tasting a lot. More. Uh, it tastes a lot yeah. more different flavors, which is actually pretty interesting. Yeah, you'll definitely get more that you'll get more of the flavors. You get more of the smell, and you can really you can pick up. Uh, the strength of the cigar a little bit easier because you'll feel it in your nose. If you do that with mm -hmm. a very strong, full-bodied cigar, you're gonna feel it in your nose. It's gonna, it's gonna burn. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember my first, my first retro hell. I inhale it. My first retro hell. I inhaled the the cigar. How did I went to the hospital? They you gave me that? oxygen. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you probably cough, cough it up a lung. <laughs> Not really. But, uh, what's you remember what cigar it was? Uh, whoa. <laughs> okay, uh, are you ready? Yeah. Padron Hermoso, 1964. <laughs> Damn. That was the first one you retro hell? Yeah, uh, yes. I was dumb. <laughs> I was dumb. Wow. Natural? Natural Madero? Uh, no, natural. But hey, it's still Maduro Padron. It's worse. Still, no, it's still Padron. <laughs> If it was a Maduro, he might have been. Uh, he might have not been here right now. Yeah, I'll be under the coffin, maybe. <laughs> so, Sai, I want to ask. So, do you yeah. remember the first cigar that you ever smoked? Yes, sir. What was it? Back in two thousand nine, I remember it was a Partagas, a Cuban Partagas, the four. I think I'm not sure if it's the four, the five, but it's a Partagas for sure. My uncle handed me uh, that cigar. I can't remember the reason why did he gave me the cigar because in that days I was a cigarette smoker. So when he handed me that cigar, he told me, hey, you don't inhale. Just puff and blow, that's all. So what, why? So, because that's how it works. It's a cigar, not a cigarette. So, so okay. I smoked, uh, so my first cigar was uh, Partagas. I didn't like it in, uh, in that day, but you know, when I, go, I remember when I go back uh, to my house, I can't smell the smoke, the cigar smoke in my clothes. And I can't tell the, ch the difference between the cigarette uh, smoke and the cigar smoke. Then I fell in love with it. I called him like, hey uncle, do you have uh, one more cigar? The same thing, uh, I call it the red one. That cigar, I, I didn't know what they call, so I call him the red one. So yeah, oh, you like it? So, no, but I like the smell. So, <laughs> so did you? So I did you like say, it. So did you say you couldn't tell the difference between a cigarette and a cigar on your? No, 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 I mean, I mean, you can tell. No, you can. You can. You okay. can tell. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it was really amazing. Uh, it was really nice experience, and until now, in 2020, every time when I call my uncle. I tell him that thing, like, hey, thank you for that cigar. Until now. So your journey with cigars started with the Cuban. Yep. So not many people, well, not many people in the United States <clears throat> can say that, yeah. right? Because it's, it's, it was very difficult in past years to get Cubans. But I 100% agree with you where you can tell the difference between cigar smoke and cigarette smoke. There is a huge difference. Yeah, he it's it's like a difference between the white and black. Yes, right. Night and day. Big, yeah, big difference. So would 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 you say like your uncle was someone that like my question to you? You might already answered it, but 
you know, who's like the one person you enjoy smoking cigars with? Would it be your uncle? My brother. Your brother. Yeah. Hold it big. Was that, just, was that just a neck crack? Yeah, let's not pass that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, can't just, you can't just go past that. Like, you didn't do it. You just well, did. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> That was like stuff you hear in the movies. I've never heard a neck crack for a while. He's like, <laughs> you didn't hear it? <laughs> oh, fuck. oh, that was loud. That was loud. That's a that's a that's a blueberry moment. <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> I was gonna say, did he just crack his neck and just keep going like nothing happened? Like I just cracked my neck and I could barely hear it. I don't know how the hell I could hear it all the way from you were. From wow. UK to New York. <laughs> wow. That, that was, was loud. loud. It sounded like it sounded like he had like a like a you ever see the ones where they put like the plastic bottle on your arm <laughs> to like make it? That's what it sounded like. That <laughs> was loud. That was really freaking loud, bro. Really? Fuck. Uh, okay, you were saying? Anyway. So, so is your brother who you like smoking cigars with, is that yeah. your older brother or your younger brother? My my oldest brother. The oldest one. And how old is your oldest brother? Uh, 49, 48. 49. And he's, is he as big as a cigar guy or is or or you're the bigger cigar guy? No, I am. I do. Uh, he's just. Can I tell you some a secret? Well, he inhales. He inhales cigars. Wow. He inhales them. He inhales them. Oh. I, I, and I ask him, how in the hell do you in, inhale cigars? So, I don't know. He's got an iron lung. I don't know how. He does Does he enjoy inhaling a cigar? I have no idea. No idea. So, uh, okay. When I done my cigar room, he came to me like, he called me, hey, where are you? I'm in my apartment. Okay, great. I'm joining you and I uh, wanna smoke in your cigar room. So, okay. But I thought he's, got, he's bringing one of his cigars. But no, he asked me, hey, Saad, uh, give me one of your cigars. I give him a Padron Hermoso. Nice. He inhaled it. He, he, he inhale Padrons. And I don't care if it's Hermoso. It's a Padron. It's a, still Padron. Is he not phased by it? He can just... <sighs> no, it's, uh, it's like... Uh, it's, not, it's like something normal. I, I don't know how he, he doing it. No, really, I don't know how he, I think he had like a, uh, it's like a superpower or something. Wow. To be able to inhale, like, to inhale it and not gag, not like cough, not nothing, just... Nothing. Nothing, just like breathing. Because listen, even I mean, we're experienced cigar smokers. I know you're experienced cigar smokers. If I inhale a cigar, I'm like, oh, oh whoops. And I'm getting dizzy. I'm like, uh, like I'm, I'm gonna, gonna feel it. it. I'm definitely gonna yeah. feel it. No, hey guys, I already told you my first retro hell, I inhale. So I went to the hospital. They gave me an oxygen. <laughs> they gave me an oxygen, right? For like um, three times in a day. For four that is, days. That is a crazy first time cigar. So it wasn't your first cigar. It was your first retro hell, But still, that's first a crazy hell. story. That's a crazy but story. For our, first, for our first cigar to be a part of this uh, cute, uh, a series, what did you say, number, a number four? I think, yeah. It's four, one, uh, five, whatever. For the first one to be a Cuban is. So, okay. So that was your first, your first cigar. And over the years, I mean... Your collection, I've seen it on, I've seen pictures on Instagram. We follow you, we like every single one, we comment on every single one. Your collection has got to be huge. I mean, how many cigars do you think that you have in your collection? I never count them, but okay, I have two humidors, one, uh, one huge humidor and one like medium size, and I got two ice boxes. Uh, one of the ice boxes for the collection, and the other box is just for uh, daily smoke. So maybe five, six hundred. I'm not sure. Five, six hundred, maybe less. I'm not sure. That's a hell. Of that's, a, that's a sizable. And and I'm, and we and anybody who follows Saad on, on Instagram, you know that he's not smoking cheap stuff. No, he's not smoking. The, the, the bottom of the litter. He's smoking premium. He's got Opus. He's got Cubans, Padrones. They're all premium sticks. He's got a, so he's got a collection of five to 600 premium sticks is a solid stash of cigars. Hey, to be honest, okay, uh, you just mentioned, mentioned Cubans or non-Cubans. 
I, yes, I, I did start with the Cubans, but I dislike the Cubans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you guys, you follow me for a long time ago. It's really rare to post a uh, you find a post of a Cuban cigar for let's say let just one cigar I post a Cuban in a week or maybe in a month. It's not because it's hard to find. No, in Kuwait we have a one hundred percent access for the Cuban cigars. We got La Casa del Habanas in Kuwait. Yeah. But I chose the non-Cubans. I chose the non-Cubans. Uh, for quality, uh, uh, better quality, uh, a lot of stuff. Well, you probably just enjoy the taste of non-Cubans. I mean, we've talked about it on the burn now plenty of times where just because it's Cuban doesn't mean that it's better than non-Cubans. It doesn't mean that it's going to be a good cigar. It just means that the tobacco is grown in Cuba. That's all it means. Yeah, yeah. Like for example, people assume it, that it's just it's better because it's harder to get, but no, that's not the case. It just means it was grown in Cuba. <laughs> yeah, but hey, the the behaik is good. The oh, the behaik. Behaik. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's the behaik or the, 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 uh, the, behaik, like oh, the behaik fifty six. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, look at it's the same it. as, uh, as as like non with non Cubans, right? Think, pick one, Nicaraguan. There's plenty of cigars, Nicaraguan Puros, that are good. And then there's some Nicaraguan Puros that are not good. It's the yeah. same thing with Cubans. There's some Cubans that are good, and then there's some Cubans that are not good. I agree. Totally agree. So but is the, it... problem is, the problem is there's still people like they, they keep saying, okay, if someone sees you and you're smoking like non-Cuban cigars, they won't call you a cigar smoker. And that pissed me off. You don't smoke a Cuban cigar. So, the, so those people that those people that say that are not cigar smokers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I no, really, I agree. Uh, and I keep, I keep telling them like, hey, if you're talking about history, for sure Cuban wins. But if you're talking about quality and construction, non-Cubans wins, for sure. How many times did I smoke a black Cuban? Millions of times. Millions, but how many times that I smoked a black non Cuban five cigars? Six that, that that's it. So what, that's do mean, like, what do you mean by what do you mean by, by uh block? You said block or yeah, block, block cigar. That? It's like a closed cigar, like you you puff, there's nothing, it's like there's something gotcha. blocking the, the, the draw. Gotcha. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. So, so it's, right. it's it's inter so it's interesting the term because, I mean, Eric, now I'm I'm not sure if you agree with this or not, but in the in in the United States, I maybe we would call that plugged a plugged cigar. Uh huh. I never yeah, even heard that of the term before. I, I mean, I don't plugged or blocked. I never even I I just because I've heard of plugged. And it's just interesting. It means the same thing. It means the same thing. Block if you a bad draw, right? Not getting a good draw. I would just yeah. Just, I would say. I would just say it's a tight draw, like it's hard. Yeah. Right? Oh no, no, it's not tight. It's really close. You can't, you can't feel the smoke. Nothing. It's a block. So if you dig in with the uh, the needle, I don't know what they call it, uh, the perfect oh. jaw, you will feel something blocking the 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 needle. Yeah. Itself. Yeah, that's the block thing. So that would be yeah. I would call that a plug. We call that plug. Is that a mistake or is that like the certain cigar? Like, what is the point of that? Uh, I believe it's uh, the mistake from the the roller himself. He yeah. didn't. I don't know what they call it. I or okay, here's the leaf. The, let's say this is the leaf. There's something that really hard in the in the in the middle. They have to take it off. Yeah, the stem. Yeah, the the yeah. The, that's uh, it. Yeah, but I don't know some reason. Uh, they forgot about it. Maybe the maybe he's drunk a little bit. He forgot to take it off. Maybe. Maybe he smoked one too many cigars. He, he inhaled and had to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I it's we. I know exactly what you're talking about because we were we were doing a, an episode. We were talking about some uh, cigar facts. I was doing the research, and yeah, they have to. It's part of the process where they have to remove the, the stem from it, and it's part of that rolling process. They don't do that, or they don't roll it properly. They don't pack it properly. You're basically getting a plug inside. And you have to, sometimes you can, you can 
force it through with that with the skewer yeah. and open it up. But it's uh -huh. annoying because you want to light a cigar. You don't want to light a cigar and go halfway through like, all right, now I got to freaking poke it. And you want the cigar to be nice the whole way through. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's get off cigars real quick. I know a question that Justin and I want to know is, how long have you been growing that damn beard? <laughs> the beard. Two years, maybe. Two? I think two years. It's been two years, yeah. Two, yeah. two years. Justin, how long have you been growing your beard? Uh, well, I haven't really been trying to grow it, but at the longest point, when I, when I, or, yeah. I was like, yeah, I look like I got to cut it. A um, couple months, maybe three months. Yeah, I mean... I mean, this is, I mean, this right now, I'm a, I mean, this is, I don't know, this is maybe a couple, like, a couple weeks, maybe two weeks. This I don't is, know, like, this is, like, about, this was from the original beard about three months, and if you could see from the last episode or whatever, I don't, I can't really grow a beard, but I can certainly grow a dark stash. Yes, you can. Why, why you can't? Why you can't? Why I can't? I think it's family genetics. My mom told me the other day, she's like, yeah. Your dad could never grow a full beard, so don't expect that you can either. Oh. Okay. So, I mean, I, it would get really dark around here, and then, like, on the side, it would just be very light. And no matter how many times I brushed it or, like, used anything, it just wouldn't become full. Hey, yeah, at least you have a mustache. <laughs> you see, but you guys, but you guys have, like, you guys have the, the dark hair. Like, mine comes in blonde, comes in red, comes in brown. It's not... But you had the, that's why I couldn't really yeah. grow the, the long, I would grow the long beard. It was too, it was too light. It wasn't like a thick, oh. it didn't look good. So I had to trim it. The only but hair, honest, yeah, go ahead. The, uh, no, you go. The, uh, the only hair I care about growing is just this. As long as I got a full <laughs> beard, that's <laughs> all that matters. I don't need anything else. Yeah, yeah. that's all. <laughs> here, here, I, I'm, I'm really happy. With that. All right. I don't need a beard. I, mean, I got friends that are even younger than me. I'm 28, and they're bald. And I'm like, I can't imagine being bald at 25, 26, 27. I'm like, that would freak me out. You know what the thing is? So my, so my, uh, my barber, my barber, he's he's bald, right? And he was saying, he goes, listen, he goes, I see, I cut so many guys' hair that are going bald. They got nothing on top, and they got a little bit on the sides. He goes, and they're trying to hold on to whatever hair they got left. And he says, listen, the greatest day in your life is when you just submit and buzz it all off. He goes, if you're going bald and you got a little bit, he goes, just, just go bald. Just cut it all, just That's buzz it. it, shave it all off. He's like, because then you don't have to worry about it. He said, I've been so many times, because I did it. I had the balding on top and he goes, and I would go by a mirror and I'd look and I'd be like this. He goes, now, he goes, the day I cut it all off, and he just left the beard. He goes, didn't look in the mirror. Yeah, he goes, it was like a weight lifted. He goes, because it was it. I didn't have to worry about anything. It was bald with a beard. And that's how it was. You know, uh, my brother, the guy who, who inhaled the cigars, yeah. he's a bald. So sometimes, oh, sorry, last week I messed with him like, hey, do you know what shampoo is? I said, what, what do you mean? But I'm just asking, do you, do you know what shampoo? Then he said, hey, fuck off. <laughs> okay, fuck <laughs> I'm just missing you. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> and yeah, and that's what he said too with my bar. He goes, you don't have to, he goes, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yep. he goes, every so, time, I, I don't need to get a haircut. He goes, I go in the shower. Yep. I do myself. Take Saving money. Saving money. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Yep, maybe that's all, that's all it is. Yeah. And I must say, the bald head with the full beard is a badass look. That's a badass look. Especially if you got some tats, you don't want to be messed with. Uh huh. <laughs> so I wouldn't. Mean, but but let me ask you the uh, side. So I mean, we all know you as a cigar guy. We only know as like a cigar aficionado, but we don't really know the side. Like, what else? What else do you like to do? What else is like? What are some of your hobbies that you like to to get interact with? Uh. My other hobby, actually, I just have two hobbies. One of them is cigars, and the second is collecting zippos or lighters. Collecting zippos? Uh, yes, sir, but not the American zippos. I collect the. Uh, what's the American zippos? I think I just upgraded okay. for unlimited minutes. I think it's telling you. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 
uh, not the American Zippos. There's the three kind of Zippos. There's the American Zippos, uh, Japanese, and the Europe. The American uh, the American Zippos are just for users. The Japanese are for collecting. Oh uh, yeah, that's the American. Yes, sir. But the Japanese and the Europe uh, Zippos are for collecting, for collectors. It goes like. Okay, it starts from two hundred dollars ends to thousand. I'm not sure uh, how much. So, so, how big is your collection? How many zippos do you have? Maybe eleven, twelve, lighter. Wow. And, and, and 12. The, the quad, the high quad, the two hundred dollar plus zippos. That's a it's like that's a nice collection. Actually, I, I I think I post uh, my Zippo's collection my in my Instagram. I'm not sure, but but right, yeah, yeah, I post it like last year maybe or maybe more. We'll have to. We're uh, gonna we're gonna find. We'll find it. We'll put the uh, we'll put the picture up. Yeah. Right now, we'll find it. And we'll over. We'll overlay it. Okay. Oh, you know, I'll say it. So like in the UK or like wait, oh, there's a freaking airplane. Come on. I thought it was for social distancing. No flying. <laughs> no fly zone. But uh, hey, maybe it's my cigars. They should. Uh, I'm sitting. I'm receiving my cigars. Come on. No, no, it, 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 it <laughs> looks like the, the JFK or LaGuardia in New York City. So it might be going the other way. But um, so are you like interested in like any sports like in the like in Kuwait or like in England? You like, like soccer or American sports? I don't know. Basketball. Dallas Cowboys, man. Oh, that's right. You are a Dallas Cowboys. You're a Cowboys fan. Come on. Yeah. Oh, why are you a Dallas Cowboy fan? Please tell me why. That's gotta be that's gotta be parental influence there. Okay, uh, I'm not as serious about the uh, the American football, but I do watch a couple of uh, matches. The reason why I become a Cowboys, uh, I have my good friend. He's uh, he's Dallas Cowboy guy. He's really crazy, really crazy. They usually so are. Every, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, every time I go to his uh, place, you see the Dallas Cowboys T-shirt, the uh, you name whatever, the cops, uh, shots of the everything. Yeah. So yeah, I fall in love with it, and it's a cowboy. <laughs> and where and where so have, you, have you ever seen the Cowboys play when they when they play in London? Yeah. You once, have. Yeah, uh, one time. That's uh, pretty cool. Well, it's been like a really long time. Where is long time your, ago, like maybe two years. Your friend who is a Cowboy fan, is he from the UK? He's, is he from Kuwait? No, he's Kuwaiti. So Kuwait. I mean, Dallas Cowboys are known to, for their widespread of, of a fan base because they used to be called America's football team, but I don't think they are. But, um, but they're known, and they still know today, obviously, about their widespread of fan loyalty around the world so i mean that's just that is just one example in kuwait where football hmm. american football is not even existent there's a cowboy fan so it's just crazy to see the widespread of the, do you know in kuwait we have american football teams kuwaiti teams like shoulder really? pads helmet yeah yeah football. yeah uh-huh i did Everything. not know that Explain. we had oh, like maybe that. maybe four or five teams we have uh i'm I don't know what what they call their teams and where do they play, but I'm sure we have like five or six teams uh, ah, playing that yeah. the American football. Are they still around today? Yeah. Okay. Wow. So they, they play? Do they have a league? Like, do they play in a league? Like we have the NFL. Do they have the K? Uh, no, 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 no. So it's just kind of it's just clubs that they play each other for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, people who who like that sport, and they don't get. Wow. Oh, someone yeah. throwing his ash. Okay, yeah. I see. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. This is the moment where I got to take the band off here. Yeah. Damn. Be careful. Be careful. Guys, wait. In the words of in the words of Brother Cigar, drop them panties, girl. Drop them panties, girl. <laughs> So, uh, so, so I, I yeah. now I, I don't know if I can speak for you, but I do realize that one of the, one of your other hobbies could be coffee. Uh, am I right? You're a big coffee lover, aren't you? Uh, yeah. 
I noticed, I noticed that he's been brewing some coffee. He brews <laughs> coffee on an airplane. Have you seen that? He brews coffee <laughs> on the airplane. Because <laughs> I've been seeing him ever since he got the man cave set up. He's been taking the burn down where he's sitting down watching us, and he's got his freshly brewed cup of coffee. It looks my, good. It looks really good. Yeah. My, about the airplane, uh, I was really, really, really tired. So – I'm looking for a good coffee, and the coffee in the airplanes is really stock. So I asked for someone to bring me like hot water. Oh, sorry, hot water. Hot water. Hot water. Hot water. That's what I, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, and I have my coffee grinder, my V60, my V60 uh, uh, filter, and I, yeah, I just making a coffee. Because I saw so, you post that, and I'm like, I mean, you can't even get on the plane with like a lighter. And at least in the United States. So it's like the fact that you put up a, uh, a video, you with the, with the lunch table down, with the whole setup going, I'm like, how is this guy making <laughs> on the airplane? It's like blew my mind. And to be honest, I really wish if, if I can't smoke a cigar in the airplane. <laughs> oh, I really wish that. They should, make, they should make an airline just for cigar smokers. That if you want to fly from point A to point B and have a cigar, <laughs> you can fly this airline. I mean, they should, like, a private, private jet airlines are so expensive as it is. They might as well just, like, make an airplane where if you're a rich snob that can afford a, a private jet, make it, like, cedar wood in the plane so you can smoke a cigar or something. Have some kind of... Well, uh, to be honest, if, if you got a private plane and it's your plane, you Fox can probably do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> That's it's like having a car. If it's your car, you can smoke in your car. If it's your freaking plane. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, what about what's your other hobbies besides these cigars? Uh, I mean, besides my, I mean, I like cigars or golf. Least I like you know, I like playing. I like sports. I like working out. Um, I like like outdoor events. I like hiking. I like camping out. Um, I like drinking, drinking beer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I just like you know traveling. I I just like I like uh, doing a lot of experiences. So um, my uh, my girlfriend's cousin, who was in the military, now he's a state trooper, and uh, he asked me if I wanted to go skydiving. Now, there's like mm. I'm kind of afraid of heights, but not really. But I'm afraid of open water. But he said skydiving, and I'm like, listen, I am no. afraid as hell to do skydiving but there's a, side of, there's a side of me that kind of wants to do it so if you like force me to do it i'll do it so that might be like my, my next endeavor is to go skydiving like no know. really eric do it it's I really mean, fun i, I mean, done it i i done it in dubai i went to dubai i done it i was i was praying like okay i'm dying i'm dying i called my mother like hey i'm doing something crazy don't ask me what i'm doing but i'm doing something crazy so if anything happened, I love you. I mean, hang out. <laughs> What's it feel like? Oh, that? so not all, no, you made her worry even more than she probably already would. Because mothers worry, period. Yeah, about their yeah, sons. that's yeah, that's why I didn't tell her. Like, hey, <laughs> but I don't know. It's some, it's really amazing. Okay, the first, okay, the first twenty seconds, you're gonna like lose your mind. After that, you're gonna enjoy it. Yeah. Because yeah, really. What about what about like the way up? Dude, Eric, you should go to uh go to iFly. So skydiving, it's weird because like if somebody forced me, like if if the plane was going down and I had and I had to jump out, I'm jumping out, right? But there's something about jumping out of a perfectly good airplane on purpose that's like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but what I would say is go because I've done the the indoor skydiving. Where you, they put you in that big, like, wind tube, the wind tunnel, and you just, like, float and, and do it. And they actually have a virtual reality um, helmet that you can put on, and it looks like it, it has goggles, and the goggles show what it would look like if you're jumping out of an airplane. And then you uh -huh. go into the wind tunnel, and it basically feels like you're falling from a plane. So I'd say if you do that first, and then upgrade well, to the. I feel like I should just, just, just go all in, just freaking, just do it. Don't even. I talked to the guy, the instructor, and I asked him. I go, so, so, 
has everybody here, all the instructors, you guys have obviously jumped out of planes. He goes, oh, yeah. He's like, I go, how many jumps have you? He goes, oh, hundreds. He goes, I've jumped out hundreds. Mm. He goes, we got guys here that have been jumping every single day for like 20 years. I'm like, what? He goes, <laughs> yeah, they have thousands of jumps all over the world. I go, how? Every day? He goes, yeah, oh, yeah. That's crazy. That's, man. He goes, sometimes they do multiple a day. They jump, they, they get back, they go up, they jump again. No, really, it's fun. It's really, really fun. Sport. No, what was what was like your thought process as you were going up in the airplane? Like, what were you thinking? Dying. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Now, you obviously they you actually were attached to somebody, right? That did it. Yeah, with someone. I I wasn't alone because if I was alone, I would be on the ground. <laughs> but yeah, um, but really, it was fun. Uh, the ticket was really expensive. I mean, really, really expensive. But my friends, uh, they told me, hey, let's do it. Let's do it. I said, are you crazy? You're going to die. No, we going to die. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at, least, at least you're dying with somebody. You're not dying alone. Huh? <laughs> so how was well, Dubai? How was Dubai? Like, what, what, did, what do you do? Yeah, did you see the Burj Khalifa, Khalifa, Khalifa when you went there? What? So, so when you went to Dubai, you know, like Eric said, how was it? And then my question was, when you were there, did you oh, sorry, see? It was, sorry, it wasn't in Dubai. It was in Abu Dhabi. It was oh, in Abu Dhabi. Oh, okay. Uh, fuck, it's been like maybe six or seven years ago. I can't remember what the call. But first, uh, first you're going to buy the ticket. Then you're going to have like a lesson, like um, three hours. They're going to teach you what you do, what you don't do. And yeah, you're ready. You're ready to go. Right. Just hop so, in in the helicopter and. So you, so you've got, been, pretty, so you're in London right now. You grew up in Kuwait. You went to Abu Dhabi for uh, skydiving. I'm not sure how far that is from Kuwait, but it sounds like you're a, a big traveler. Is that is that right? It's hour and a half. Hour and a half from Kuwait to Abu Dhabi. Okay, so do you so are you are you like a traveling guy? Do you like to travel? Mm, no, but I went to I went to Abu Dhabi uh, and Dubai just to visit some friends, and uh, nothing crazy. But the reason why I came here in the UK for the surgery, of course, uh, brother Cigar know, uh, knows what I'm talking about, and maybe you you two know. And uh, my family is here. Uh, so I have some friends. That's why uh, I come here a lot. And I have a house here, so no need to rent a hotel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so have you ever, and I, I, I think we had talked about this in the past, that you were going to come to the United States at some point. Yeah. Which well, is on hold now because of... Yeah, uh, and I'm happy I, I didn't come. <laughs> of damn coronavirus, but uh, in the future, after all this clears up, you're going to be coming, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Actually, I already booked for for uh, New York, LA, and uh, and Miami. I already booked. No but, Dallas. You're not going to Dallas to see your Cowboys. <laughs> where is it? Where are you going? For? <laughs> you're not gonna go to Dallas. Texas. Uh, no. <laughs> Not really, there's not really a do much in Texas. But, no, but you know what? No, no. The reason why I came to the U.S. not for sport, chasing sports or restaurants or whatever. Just to meet some smokers like you guys. Just like uh, the um, cigar community. Um, meeting, meeting some followers, friends, uh, cigar lounges, uh, cigar shops. Mm. And that's the beauty about this uh, community, the cigar community. Yeah, and to be, and absolutely. Well, when you come to New York, you're, we're going to show you one heck of a time in New York City. We'll take you all the yeah. good spots, all the good restaurants. Hey, just make sure you don't forget about the pizza. Oh, oh, oh come on. <laughs> I know the best, best pizza I've ever had in my life. And I actually grew up making pizza. That was my high school job was pizzeria, spinning the dough, making pizza. And to this day, the best slice I've ever had in my life is Sauce Pizzeria on East 12th Street. So if you come, we'll go in there. That's where we're going. Call it a day. It's the best pizza I've ever had in my life. You, uh, awesome. you uh, speaking of New York, 
So I, I believe she's originally from Chicago, but she moved to New, New York. Uh, lighten up, our, our friend. Yeah, Karen. Karen. Uh -huh. you, uh, you Karen. Should, yeah, Karen. You shared Karen. a cigar with her, I believe, in the UK. You know, how was it hanging out with her? Nice. It was great. To be, on, to be honest, before I meet her, uh, okay, the reason why I'm meeting her to, I'm giving someone, I'm receiving a cigar, and I'm giving someone a cigar. And I spoke to her like, hey, uh, let's smoke. Let's hang out somewhere. And I have uh, his, uh, I post alone cigar, if you know him. Yep. Yeah. I got his cigars and he sent me some cigars. So before that, I asked uh, Anna, Cigar Chase Fire. It's a funny story. I asked Anna, Cigar Chase Fire, like, hey, do you, do you know her? She, yeah, uh, we just text. Does she speak English? Third <laughs> 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 so, question. I, I, I don't know, but uh, she typed well. So, but yeah, I know, but does she speak English? So I don't know. So when I met her in London, she speaks really nice. So I told her about the story and she said, to be honest, I asked myself the same question. Does BOTL Kuwait speak English? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you gotta do it. So you gotta yeah, but But yeah, um, I'm really, really happy to, to be a part with, uh, in this community, which is the cigar community. I believe every time if you meet someone, and it doesn't matter if uh, your followers in Instagram, whatever, even like strangers, you get you will feel that you know that guy for a long time ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And for example, right now we're just we chatting. I don't feel like something weird, like I don't know that guy or I don't know them. Yeah. But yeah, we just talk. And we have it like a good conversation. That's the, and that's the beauty about the cigar community. Cigar. You meet someone, and I met at least like okay, I have Switzerland, Lebanon, America, London, uh, Manchester, what else? Dubai, Saudi Arabia. I met a lot of people, and they're really good people. Really good people. I'm really happy to be a part in this community. That's the um, thing, yeah. man. Yeah, it's a, we it know. is. It's, it's you have friends all over the world. Yeah, it's not, it's, yeah. It's this. not just a cigar. It's not just a smoke. It's more than a cigar. Yeah, it's, it's more than yeah. The camaraderie. It's you know yep, getting sir. people and just you know going back and forth. I mean, I always say it like we can have nothing in common, all three of us. But you know, there's one thing in common is this, and that's what brings us together. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and you hey, and hey, you send me you send me a cigar like last year if you remember. I show you the picture that I sent yeah. you, the, the, the letter the letter that you sent me. I st I still keep that, and a lot of people send me like a gift, and they write me a letter. I don't throw it away. I keep them. Same. Uh, yeah, we do the uh, same thing. Got every letter. Yep. So have you had a rookie move, uh, Justin? Yeah. This year, I have. No, no, right uh, now. I have, no, yes. Six. No, the, no, the one that you're having right now. No. Oh, I okay, did. okay, okay. So rocking right? and rolling, baby. I'm rocking and rolling. So, so speak. So, speaking of, of you know this being the connection between all of us. Now, I know this is going to be a very difficult question to answer, and we ask this a lot, and I've been asked this a lot, and it's almost impossible to answer. So, I won't ask you with what is your number one cigar ever but i will ask what are some of your favorite some of your go-to smokes that you enjoy not the number not the best cigar you've ever had if you know the best cigar then by all means say it but i know how difficult that is to answer because there's millions of choices so what would be some of your top cigars not in any particular order one or Top, top one or top three? Yeah, just the, the, the top, you know, handful. Three, four, five. Like I said, no particular order, just... No, I can't do it. Uh, number one, for sure. Haram and Solomon. I, I'm talking about non-Cubans. Okay. Haram and, yeah, so Haram this and is, Solomon. So these are your top five non-Cuban brands. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, top five. Uh, uh, top five. Okay, let's start with the Padrons. 
Arturo Fonte, Herman Solomon, Cadwell. I am a huge fan for the Cadwell cigars. Oh, okay. Oh, and the fifth, of course, Sergio Fernandez. Mm. Pretty solid. Uh huh. I know. That's a solid list. So for Caldwell, one of my go-to smokes. I enjoy this smoke very much. Is the Blind Man's Bluff. From oh. Caldwell. But hey, yeah. have you, have you, have, of course, but have you tried the Anastasia? The Anastasia? No, I have not by Caldwell. And I've had a lot of Caldwell. Is that, I've that's had the... Blind Man's Bluff, Last Czar, Long Live the King, The King is Dead. I've had a lot of them. That's the cigar with the, with the girl on the right, on yes. the left, right? And she kind of uh, looked pissed off. Yes, she is. I don't know if you guys ever watched Parks and Rec, but she looks like one of the characters from that show, like identical. Really I'm going to have to get some of that. I have not had the Anastasia. Hey, hey. Do you, okay, there's a Lebanese uh, sister of the leaf. Her nickname is Lorita. Do you know her? Yeah, yeah, Lorita. She Regina. looks like she looks like the tag. Every time when I smoke that cigar, I tag her like, hey, I'm smoking you. She <laughs> was like, oh, yes, oh, my God, she looks like me. I'm going to have to but, find I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to find one of those. Because yeah. I've had, they had another one. They had the... Um, uh, the ALK, the All Out Kings, and I forgot who the oh. collaboration. That was Caldwell and somebody else. Was that Caldwell and um, uh, I can't remember. It was it was a collaboration between Caldwell and somebody else. They called the ALK. I thought and it was AJ. It was, was it AJ? I'm not, I'm AJ? Not, I'm not sure. Maybe. I'm not sure. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. AJ, AJ Fernandez with the uh, the, tea, uh, the it's called the T and the other cigars. Um, I think um, yeah, the T. Oh, yeah, no, the T and the, the, tea and the, the, the key, T and the... The T or the key, something like that. Yeah, so there was another collaboration called the ALK, which is the Drew All State. Out Kings. Drew Estate. Drew Estate. And, yeah, so that one was like, of the Cold no. Wells, I would say that one was like the name. It was okay, but the other Cold Wells that I've had were, I love them. Blind Man's Bluff is probably one of my favorite ones. I know you like... Um, Either Long Live the King or The King is Dead, Eric, right? The King is Dead. King is Actually, Dead. Actually, yeah. my, my top one, Caldwell, is the Anastasia. My top one. I'm going to have to get that. I'm yeah, going to have to get that. try that one. So, okay, so and, you said control. And this cigar is the one. reason. This cigar is the reason why I keep saying I wish if Caldwell be a cigar of the year. You do well, if we, can, if, if, if we can find him here very easily, we'll send you some for sure. Oh, thank you. Because sure. I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can find them somewhere. But so you said Padron was your number one. So of Padrones, what's your favorite Padron? Uh, 1964. Uh, uh, I think the 28th, the Hermoso. Okay, the so the one. The short okay. cigar. Yeah, I actually, I, I actually just bought a couple of those. To stock up for uh, for quarantine. Yeah, it's really amazing uh, stick. And uh, the other padron, and I know people will judge me, but I love the Damaso. Ooh, I love I the Damaso. Love Damaso. So do we. Damaso's a great. I have one of those too. Those are great. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but there's a lot of people like yeah. It's a nice cigar, but it's not a padron. It's not that strong. Of course, it's. it's it's a natural wrap or a Connecticut wrap. Yeah, I guess it's, exactly. a yeah, it's the first. It's the first Connecticut that Padron released, which is why people say that's not a real Padron. Well, it is because it's made by clearly Padron. made by Padron, so it's a Padron. Exactly. But it's the same type of. It's the same type of blend to just put a Connecticut wrapper on it, and it's it's a pretty damn good smoke. I enjoy it. Absolutely. So my um, um, about and about the Cubans. Bihiki for sure. Bahai. Number one. Bahai. The Bihai, yeah. Bihai, <laughs> number one. <laughs> Bihai's my favorite too. Uh huh. Uh, Which one? 52, 52, 54, or 50, 56? Uh, 52, man. 52? Okay. Or 54. 52, yeah, I 54. like the 54. The like 56. A, little bit, a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker. Yeah, but the 56, I'm not a fan for the 56. And the second will go to the Monte Cristo at the 80th anniversary. Mm. Did we have we had that on? Um, did we smoke that on on Burndown? What's that? Which one? The Monte Cristo 80th. No, I think we. No, had, we smoked 50, right? We smoked the uh, Monte Cristo. Yeah, the the, uh, the 50 años. 
That's a non Cuban oh, one. That's a good one, too. And the third will go to uh, the Quai d'Orsay 50. The 50. I'm not, I'm not a fan for the 54. It's a good bus. I think the 50 is much better than the 54. So that's I one that I've been wanting to have for the longest time. Oh, really? I, I have yet to have it, and I've been wanting it. I actually have some that are ordered, but they're, I order them from Europe, and they're stuck in Europe because the post offices are closed. So oh. my, shipment, my shipment is ready to go. But I, I guess you have the best luck, man. <laughs> but I, I, but I contacted them. I con it's um, a company called All Things Cigars. Oh China. yeah, yeah. If you follow them, they're they're great. Yeah, I've, I've reached out to everybody. I don't know if you read. I put a thing on a story on my Instagram saying, "Hey, where can I get Cubans?" And a lot of people recommended them. I put the order in. They're great guys. And they said, yeah, no problem. We got you. We'll take care of everything. And he's been updating me saying, hey, listen, it's all ready. It's packed up. It's ready to go. It's sitting in the humidor waiting for the post office to open. Great. That's great. So enough. I'm excited. Yeah. Excited for those. So we'll – Yeah, uh, but hey, hey, don't drop the, the, uh, the kibbin on, this, uh, on the coffee. Be careful, man. We won't do that. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> one, one mistake. Don't drop the cubin in the coffee. <laughs> it, 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 how, it, how did you do that? How how did you smoke? Like, how did you smoke it? How did you decide to? Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna smoke it. How it tastes? It tastes like coffee or the dude, same it, aroma? It, 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 it phenomenal. I mean, I, it was like an episode of MythBusters. It, it felt like it was in, and it got soaked up for a little bit. I you know I blew it out a little bit, but I mean, as you can watch in the episode, it smoked perfect and it tasted phenomenal. I mean, it's like we were shocked. Fun. Shot. I mean, oh yeah, but hey, I think this is more than rookie move. I think this is the the high level of the rookie. The rookie yeah, move. I think that's like you know, like aficionado <laughs> move, aficionado move, or something. You set, you uh, set the bar. You set the bar. Like that's that's the the rookie move to beat. Like that's the I number think, one <laughs> rookie move of all time. Like I don't know what you have to do to surpass that. I think. We can call it the fucked up move. <laughs> it's move. much better than the rookie move. The thumb, the thumb. Uh huh. <laughs> That's a t shirt. You ain't rookie move until you dropped your Cuban in the coffee. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But uh, we're coming up to almost like an hour. So, my, oh. my, my last question I know it's time's flying because we're just BSing. This is what, this is what happens when, you, when you know, you're talking and you're smoking a cigar. But, oh, yeah. Uh, I think the last, the last thing that Justin and I know, I'm sure the other people that follow you want to know is, uh, you know, that cigar room that, or that whatever you made it, a cigar building room, like how did the that go in? Like, how did you get that going? Like, what, what is that? Do you like it? No, I love, love it. We love it. We love it. Okay. Uh, th that room was my, my brother's room, my youngest brother room. He hates smokes. He hates anything, cigarettes, cigars, hookah, uh, vape, anything that smoke, he, he, he hated. it. So I was smoking a cigar in my room. Then he called me, hey, please, are you smoking a cigar? Yes. Come on, the smell is really horrible and I can't smell in my room. So you know what? Soon you're going to go away, like marry or whatever. I'm going to turn your room to a cigar room. Say, hey, huh, okay, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that's what happened. I turned his, uh, his bedroom to a cigar room. And I wow. text him, like, and I take a video, like, hey, I told you that, okay, that's nice, but <laughs> smoking will kill you. I, I don't, I don't care. We're, we're all going to die so, so, someday. So it was your brother's uh, old bedroom? Uh-huh. It was his bedroom. Younger brother? Uh, no, yeah. So what? So well, I guess he moved on with his life. He got married. He got married. And then so, moved out, and then is it like on the first floor? Is it on the second floor? Like no, the second, the second. And so, like, what was like the preparing? Like, how did like did you have to like put special wood around everything? Like, how did you make that? Uh, I had a help uh, from uh, from a, from a guy. His name is Abdul Rahman. He's uh, he's one of the owners of the cigar room, uh, Kuwait. Okay, uh, it's a shop and. About the decoration and blah 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 blah. 
I got so pissed. Like, I didn't know what to paint the wall. Which color? Which color? I can't paint it like a light color because it's going to be yellowish. In, for like, for example, like if you smoke like a year, two years, three years ago. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be like a yellow. So I decided to, okay, I have to go with the dark. Then that guy whose name is Abdurrahman, he helped me with that color. The the Bordox, I think it's called the Bordox. Or the red, it's, it's like a red wine color. Yeah, Bord, uh, Bordeaux is what we would say. Bordeaux yeah. or Bordeaux, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, after that, I, uh, I built it. Then I said, like, there's something missing. There's something missing. Then, yeah, uh, I think I have to purchase the uh, skulls. I just, like, hang out on the, on the wall. And I got the ram and the buffalo skull. And yeah, it's, uh, it's really amazing. Um, with all the... Um, you know what? Okay, I, I said before, I'm not going to reach that much of money. But I reach it the, the month. Like, I spend, like, I think more than three or $4,000. But, wow. but it's worth it. It's worth it. Hell yeah. It's really worth it. Uh, at least you have somewhere to smoke. No need to go out. Uh, like, you can smoke at home. You have everything like uh, entertaining. I can see the uh, the uh, the Burn Down podcast. Yeah, on we, my TV. we see you watching it on there. We see you watching it on there. <laughs> yeah, and I send you one of one of my uh, one of your episodes. Uh, every time when Justin speak, my phone and my Siri responds like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you remember that? I, <laughs> so, yes. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but. I'm really proud that I make that decision, and I'm really proud to to do it in that way. I YouTube a lot of, I check a lot of videos on YouTube how to build a cigar room and how to make uh, the perfect cigar room or the men cave for men. And yeah, I, I done it. And, well, it and I miss it. And I'm really, it. really miss it. I really miss it. I'm sure it looks, yeah. it looks fantastic. I mean, from the skulls to the color of the walls to the couches to all your entertainment, it came out beautiful. We are very jealous. And like you said, it's great to have a spot that yeah. you can smoke cigars, you don't have to leave. Yeah. And hey, until now, I received a lot of DMs asking me if I'm a gothic just because I have a skull. That's crazy. That is yeah, crazy. I don't know why. I don't know why. They, hey, are you gothic? I said, why? I don't know. You have a skulls. You smoke cigars. You have a beard. What the fuck? So I just like this. <laughs> People make assumptions. <laughs> I don't know why. But I want to ask you one question. I think um, you, Eric, you play golf, right? Yeah, we both play golf. Yeah. We both do. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, great. What's, what's the reason for playing golf? Why do you fall in love with the golf? I mean, for me, I mean, I like actually, I enjoy playing the game, but it's also, it's like kind of like smoking a cigar, man. It's like, it's like a sport that you can relax at. You're usually with a group of people, a group of guys, girls, whatever, but you're having a good time and everyone's just, it's like smoking a cigar. You're shooting the shit with people, you're playing a sport and it's kind of like a little, you know, you're, you're competing against other people and usually you're playing on a nice day and it's hot and it's warm and. It's just, it's just a relaxing sport, and when you play a relaxing sport, what else can you do with re relax is smoke a cigar. So it just, just goes hand in hand. It's just a, it's just a relaxing and enjoyable sport to play. Yeah, I would, uh, I would agree with that. It's one where it's a sport that you can smoke cigars while you're playing. And second, I like the fact that if you're playing against other people, you're not really playing against them it's more you guys playing against the course. Yeah. So it's more of, it's not so much like, you know, I'm a basketball player. That was one of, that's one of my, my hobbies. That's one of my sports. But it's your team versus the other team. And the other team is trying to score, and you're preventing them from scoring and vice versa. Whereas football, football, you're trying to score. The other team is trying to stop you from scoring. But in golf, you're not trying to stop the other person from doing anything. You're just trying to play the course better than they play the course. So it's not one person versus the other person. It's both of them versus the course itself, which I find, I find unique to that sport. There's not many other Unique and complicated. 
It's unique and complicated. It is. It is a little complicated, but it's a very relaxing sport. You can go out by yourself. You don't need somebody else to play it like every other sport. Um, you can play by yourself, enjoy a cigar, relax, enjoy the weather. And most people who play, so most people who play golf isn't really good at golf anyway. <laughs> it's mostly like you're cool. just like hanging cool. out with a group of your friends or a group of your family and just having a good time. I mean, I can't how many times I'm just going to test this too. I mean, we play golf. I mean, I'm not the best golfer either, but there's people I play golf with and they're, they're they never played golf before and they're, they're shanking the shots. They're digging holes from swinging so hard and it's just a good time. Uh, to be honest, okay, it's away from one of the reasons that makes me to look at that bad boy. Oh, look at that thing. That's a Fuente for you. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, one of the reasons that makes me to upgrade my picture's quality is you guys. It's us. Yeah. And well, especially, uh, really, and especially uh, Eric. I. I like the way that you take. Okay, you two uh, had the same quality, but the difference is like, uh, how do I say? It? Okay, for for example, that for cigar, you take a picture like you being just like I don't know how the position. Like you take it like this position, uh, this mode. Top down, but, top down. Yeah, 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 from the top and down. But brother cigars, I still can't believe that you take pictures with your uh, in your iPhone. I thought you're gonna. When I ask you, I thought you're gonna say it's a Nikon or a Canon or some camera. Yeah. But you shocked me when you told me. Uh, people. It's an iPhone. People ask me all the time. I mean, I got I I got a recent DM on the burn down saying, "How do you shoot your videos?" And I said, yeah. "iPhone A plus." And he's always, "Wow, I have an iPhone 11. I'm gonna start recording video." And I'm like, <laughs> "The it's, iPhones are amazing." It's just as good yes. as any other camera. I mean, you really can't beat it. So I mean, I mean, the shots that we like. I don't know if you've seen some of the posts that we put of of a picture of ourselves with just the white background, like smoking a cigar. Those are taken with an iPhone. With an iPhone, yeah. It's just proper lighting, proper background, and some editing. Just, and it's I don't know. It's, Thank you, Steve Jobs. Thank you, Steve Jobs. Thank you. R.I.P. Steve uh -huh. Jobs. Uh -huh. <laughs> So Eric, so I think we're I think we're coming up on uh, over an hour, right? Yep. We're uh, we're at an hour and eight minutes to be exact. Wow. So I think the last thing I think what we're gonna do to send off the uh, the episode here is whoever's got a little bit left in there. You got it, baby. Drink. We want to say, Saad, thank you very much for joining us on the burn down. It's been a great. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. I uh, hope all the watchers out there, all the listeners, hope you guys enjoyed this. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, five star rating, five thumbs up. Go follow Saad on, on uh, botl.kwt on the gram. Go follow him. You're going to love his pictures. Um, slide in his DMs. Hit him up with a message, like, comment. You know the deal. But and with that, we, we salute you. to Saad. We appreciate you coming on, Saad. Cheers, brother. I my pleasure, man. My pleasure, guys.